want to put one of my lectures, or some of my lectures, online to an open resource so that new students can see it, um, incoming students can see it, and also the students who are in my course at the moment can actually revisit that lecture with speech and mm -hmm. interaction rather than just the PowerPoint that's already on our uh, learning resource module. What, what, how would I go about that? So is this going to be openly available to students? It's not going to be a password site? Well, if I was going to do it anyway, I think I'd quite like students who were applying to the course who weren't enrolled to be able to see it, so we wouldn't be able to mm. password it. Mm. Okay. So open, yeah, Googleable. Okay. Do you mean it's a lecture that you've already prepared and been videoed, or is it something that you're going to develop from you? I think both. I think I'd start with um, one lecture I was thinking in particular, where I am critiquing a well-known and prestigious magazine and its use of photography. What would I have to think about then? Okay. Are you using any images associated with that magazine? Very much so. It is a photography course. Ah, yes. So I have to obviously use photos. Okay, okay. Well, you would really need to think about the permissions that you need because obviously you're using um, third-party sources. These aren't photographs that you're taking. They're right. photographs that somebody else has taken. And obviously they're being published in a magazine, so that magazine has probably got... Um, ownership of those um, photographs, the photographer might have ownership of those photographs, so you need to go to the publisher and get permission to use any of those photographs from that magazine if you're going to put them openly available. Um, it might be worth thinking about what permissions you need right at the outset of designing what you're going to go online and openly available, because there are photograph sites that you can um, access and the photographs are freely available. However, I mean obviously this is an academic programme, I need to use certain practitioners, yes. certain contexts and if I was to use one of these free sites does that not mean that what I teach is being informed by what I can get for free? That could be a risk, that could be a risk, but obviously it depends around the topic that you're teaching. Um, I mean, if you were going to go for openly accessible stuff that you can use in an educational context, you can search under the Creative Commons license that would allow you to use stuff, attribute correctly, and share alike, which is quite useful. If you were to go for more specific materials, so by particular ph photographers or from particular journals, you would need to source permission before you do anything. That would be your first starting point. And is that the case for... A, a normal lecture, a face-to-face -face lecture, if I'm using a PowerPoint with 80 different photographers work on it? Yes, it would be really. Um, you should actually get permission to use those, for, certainly if they're going onto any digital platform. Digital platform. Um, if you were just doing it in, yeah, you would have to, you would have to. I mean, if you were just perhaps using uh, photographs from a book using the lecture visualizer, uh, then that's fine because that's not stored anywhere. But as soon as you store that material digitally, yes, you do need to source permissions really.